Hello everyone and a very warm welcome. This is the second part in the wrap series for Power Apps. In this tutorial, we are going to create an Active Directory app registrations and wrap our Power App. So without wasting any further time, let's get into the demo. So here my friends, I am in my portal.azure.com. I search for app registrations. In the app registrations, I create a new app registration and I give it a name, wrap demo 2023 final. Okay, and here I select multi-tenant. Okay, this is very important. It has to be a multi-tenant. We need to set the redirect URL, but we can do it later. At this point, we click on register. The app registration has been created. The next step would be to provide API permissions because our app needs few permissions. And if you remember, I told you that you need to have admin privileges or even better global admin privileges so that you can give consent on behalf of the organization. And this is where it is required. So before granting consent, we need to give some level of permissions. So the first permission that we need to grant is dynamic CRM. I click on add permission. The second step would be to add another permission, but this is APIs for my organization and the permission level is Azure API connections. I'll again select and click on add. The third permission that I need to give is power app service. Again, it's API my organization uses so power apps service and i'll click on add permission if your app needs any other permissions this is where you grant them for the purpose of this demo the permissions are enough and i'll click on grant admin consent understand this this is very important you are granting the consent on behalf of the organization but the permission type is delegated now that we have the permissions granted, the next step would be to set up the authentication because your users need to authenticate against your app. So I'll click on authentication and I'll set up a new platform. The new platform that I need to set up is Android. I need to give my package a meaningful name. So just look at the naming convention. So I'll follow a similar naming convention. Let's do com.clavin fernandez my rap now we need to give it a signature hash from where will we get the signature hash so to get the signature hash i'm going to go ahead and use jdk and if you remember it was one of the prerequisites so let me go to the jdk location real quick so the location would be jdk 21 or the jdk version that you have installed and then bin now here we will find a tool known as key tool. This key tool or this application is used for creating signing certificates. To use this tool, we need to use the command prompt and we will launch the command prompt as an admin. So here I have the command prompt. I need to CD that is change the directory to this location. Perfect. Next, I need to execute a command. The command that I'm going to execute would be key tool, then generate a key, give the certificate a name or an alias, and then go ahead and store it with the name powerappsfernandez.jsk. The key size is 2048 and the validity is 10,000 days. If I hit enter, it will tell me to give it a password. I'll give it a simple password. Then it will ask me to give to provide my first name and last name. So I'll provide my first name and last name out here. That's Clavin Fernandez. The organization would be Clavin Fernandez. Uh, the name of the organizational unit was Clavin Fernandez. The name of the organization would be Clavin. Is the name of the city or the locality? I'll type in Pune. What is the state or the province? I'll type in Maharashtra. The first two letters of the country, I'm in India, so it's IN. So finally, I see that it is confirming if the values are correct. So I can just say Y, that is yes, and enter. It should have generated a certificate. What is the name of a certificate? It's known as Power Apps Wrap Fernandez.jsk, the first one in the list. Now that we have the certificate, we need to export the 
base 64 bit content out of it. So to export the base 64 bit content, I need to execute another command. Next, we need to use the open SSL. Okay, so to use the open SSL, I will use another command in combination with the key tool. And it looks like this. So key tool, export certificate, the name of my certificate, okay, the name of my certificate or the alias of my certificate was Power Apps Fernandez. So let me go ahead and change that here. So the next step would be to go ahead and use the key tool and export the certificate as base64. So what I'll do is that I'll paste this in and it will export my certificate as a base64 string. And most importantly, if you see, the final bit of the command uses OpenSSL. If you remember, OpenSSL was one of the prerequisites. So I'll hit enter, it will prompt me for the password, and I'll put in the password. And if you see, it has given me a base64 bit string. At this point, I can copy this and add it here. And I can say configure. So this has actually gone ahead and configured a redirect URL for my app. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the app registrations in the Azure Active Directory. However, we need to keep the application ID handy. So in the next step, we need to execute some PowerShell commands such that third-party apps can be allowed in this Azure Active Directory. The third-party app in this context would be our Canvas app. That being said, let's go back to PowerShell. So you need to go ahead and first set the execution policy. I have already set it. You need to install two modules. It's already done. And then once you install the modules, you need to add a Power Apps account. So to add a Power Apps account, you need to add in your username and password. So I'm going to paste in my username and password here. If you see, my username was cached, but if you're doing it for the first time, it will also prompt you to manually enter the username. Perfect, so the command has been executed. It needs the application ID. As I told you, we need to allow third-party apps. So let me quickly go and grab the application ID from my Azure portal. So it seems that application ID is a single word. So let me try to run it. Perfect. And then I get 200 OK status code. So this looks good. In fact, this looks very good. At this point, I have configured my Azure AD to successfully create a multi-tenant application, give it the required permission and also allow third-party apps. So that being said, let's go back to our portal and let's go to the App Center. In the App Center, I need to go ahead and create a new app. So I'll create a new app. If you don't have an organization, it will ask you to also create an organization. So I'll give my Canvas app, which needs to be wrapped, a meaningful name, sample wrap demo i'll just say the release type is production but yeah you don't use production basically at this point i need an android and a react native perfect i can give the app an icon so let me select an icon perfect our app has been created this is awesome next we need to go into our power apps and actually start wrapping our app right so i go into the solutions so here i have the wrap so here I have the solutions. In the solution, I have an app. What I'm going to do is I'll click on the three dots and I'll click and I'll select wrap. So the next step would be to wrap the app. So on this screen, you see a primary app and a secondary app. We just have a primary app. If you have a primary app that points to a secondary app, then you can select it here. In the next step, you need to specify the bundle ID of the app. So from where will we get the bundle ID? We get it from the app registrations in Azure. So the package name is the bundle ID in this case. So I go back, copy the bundle ID and click on next. At this point, I can give my app some custom branding. If you see, I have updated the icon. 
but you can do much more. You can put a splash screen, you can do a welcome screen, you can also change the color out here and you can also specify a fill color for the button. You can also specify a light or a dark theme. I'll specify a dark theme. So here, my friends, is the place where you actually go ahead and do app branding. So I'll click on next. Here, I will select my app registration. So my the name of my app registration is Rap Demo Final 23, right? So just want to make sure that all the things are correct. At this point, for the Android redirect URL, you might be prompted to put in a hash or the signature hash. You can copy the signature hash from the app registrations authentication and here is the signature that you need to copy. Understand this, the redirect URL is the most important bit, right? So I'll go back and check the redirect URL. It looks correct. The admin consent was given for this Azure application. So we'll go back and we'll also have a check on this. So it ends with D-E-B-E, -E. perfect. At this point, I can click on next. I'll click on get app center token. If you are already authenticated in the same browser, this should be pretty simple. You can just copy this GUID and you need to just paste it here, right? And it tells you and it returns you the organization. And here you need to select app that you have created out here in the app center, right? My app name is sample wrap demo and I'll click on next. Everything looks good. We are not using the key vault, so that's okay. The name of my app center location is also good and I'll click on build. At this point, my app will build. This might take up to 20 minutes depending on the complexity of your app. We can leave it out here. So in the next demo, we will go ahead and download the app from the app center finally sign it with our JKS file and then install it in our Android application. And I think that's pretty much it. Thank you for your time and I hope this tutorial was informative and bye-bye.